I'm Scott Allen Miller, and today we're covering the top 10 reasons that Nicaragua is the perfect destination for digital nomads. At number 10, it should come as no surprise to those who are familiar with Nicaragua's place in the world, but if you're not familiar with Nicaragua, then it's important to note that this exotic location that is not well known to much of the world is a great destination for paradise living, something that many digital nomads are seeking. Whether you're looking for beautiful Pacific beaches, quiet Caribbean waterfront, islands in the Caribbean, small mountains where you can get a relaxed, more hometown feeling with a cooler bit of weather or you're looking for real full-on around-the-clock summer tropical vibes Nicaragua has this for you including the island of Ometepe which is a volcanic island in the middle of Central America's largest lake Lago Nicaragua Nicaragua is full of colonial cities a small approachable capital many small villages and offers a lot of different variety as long as you're willing to sacrifice the accessibility to snow and cold weather and are willing to put up with year-round tropical living. However, Nicaragua is not as hot as people often believe it to be. It has relatively low humidity, but does have relatively high heat throughout almost all of the country. A few of the mountain cities do offer cooler living, but that cooler living is still quite warm for much of the world, and about the lowest you're gonna find for daily temperatures is in the high 70s, whereas much of the country you're going to experience high 80s or low 90s for much of the year. But you have relatively equal temperature year round. So if you're looking for that tropical experience in a place that is absolutely beautiful with lots of sunshine and access to all kinds of beautiful, beaches, mountains, islands, lakes, a little bit of rivers, small towns, and are willing to sacrifice having a large metropolitan area, Nicaragua could be just the right destination for you to be a digital nomad. Number nine is healthy living. While finding a vegan market may prove to be a bit of a challenge, they do exist, but there are certainly few and far between. Finding good quality, healthy food at very reasonable prices, whether you're getting produce from the market or you're going to the supermarket to cook for yourself or you're going out to restaurants, Nicaragua offers a lot of quality, healthy eating options, often at really low prices. This means that you have more buying power to go out and get better food that's better for you. And the better you're eating, the better you're going to live in general. Nicaragua also is a very get outside and be outdoors kind of country. Because it is part of the culture to spend a great deal of your time outside and to walk from destination to destination whenever possible or to ride a bicycle, it's really easy to be naturally encouraged both by the fact that everyone else is getting out and being healthy and doing healthy things, but also because so many things in society are arranged around going outside and moving from place to place on foot or being outside or just being active. It makes it very easy to have a relatively healthy lifestyle even if you're not a person who is naturally going to get out and do those things. You're going to be just a little bit encouraged to be more healthy than many other destinations simply because of the way that the country treats everyday life. But if you're someone who is interested in a even greater step towards a healthy life, then you have some really good options because gym culture is very big here in Nicaragua. Now, I will point out that the gyms here tend to be quite basic. They tend to be very inexpensive, but they are not air conditioned. They're not fancy. In general, there's exceptions. And so some people are surprised by the type of gyms that they have but that people go to the gym is extremely common and access to a gym even if you live in a small village or a little beach town is generally really easy there are very few communities that don't have one or more gyms and if you live in the city you'll often find one every few blocks much like the easy access to pharmacies and street food that you find all throughout any of the cities even small towns in Nicaragua gyms are going to fall into that category they're such a part of everyday life that it's hard to imagine living in Nicaragua and not having accessibility to one much of Nicaragua lives every day, day to day, without using air conditioning. As a digital nomad, you may want to consider air conditioning much more than someone who lives here full time or has lived here for a long time or grew up here. However, outside of the super hot cities of Leon and Chinandega, much of the country lives day to day without air conditioning. And even as a digital nomad who is moving into the country, if you're able to handle or adapt to a little bit warmer temperatures, it is a very steady temperature. Like I said earlier, it is a relatively low humidity in 
most of the country. And with that, it is common to simply live with fans and open windows. And because you're not going in and out of air conditioning and you're not dealing with temperature changes of any great degree day to day, many people find that it's perfectly comfortable living without air conditioning. And that means more fresh air, which means healthier living for you. That open air lifestyle also contributes to the amount of getting out and walking that is done in the country because you often leave your windows and doors open. You're feeling more connected with the outside world. You're not going to and from air conditioning. You're not closing doors to keep in air conditioning. And because of that, it makes it very easy to simply walk out your door, walk around your house, walk out into your yard, maybe walk down the street very transparently. It's uh, less of a barrier or a, uh, a gap between where you're doing your work and where you're going to move to. And of course, you're encouraged because of the way the country is to take your laptop with you and sit on the beach or go to a cafe or whatever in order to be outside while you're working. That is very normal since being inside is much like being outside. There's no reason not to be outside in many cases. It's also worth noting that the mountain cities, that's Esteli, Matagalpa, and Hinotega, have much cooler temperatures and it would be extremely rare to want to have air conditioning in those towns. You'll have your warm day, but your warm days are not that extreme and the average day is going to be extremely comfortable. And in most of the country, still probably not Leon and Chinandega, you're going to find that the nights are cool enough that sleeping without air conditioning is generally quite easy, maybe as long as you have a fan. And number eight, carrying on from what we said in number nine about your general healthy going out fresh air kind of lifestyle, Nicaragua has a general culture of going out. People like to be social, they like to get outside, they like to go out with other people, they like to have a lot of nightlife. So living in Nicaragua, in most of the country, there will be exceptions, but they are few and far between. Being here and making any attempt to be part of the local culture means you're probably going to be heading out and doing things with friends or acquaintances or just going out and finding the local population where they're going out in the evenings. This often means getting off of work, having a shower, taking a little bit of time maybe to grab some food because a lot of people eat before they go out to save some money, and then heading out someplace like a bar to just hang out with local friends, going to a venue where there's going to be live music, maybe going to a show of some type. But one thing or another, most Nicaraguans are finding that they're heading out on most nights of the week. It's not simply a waiting until Friday or Saturday night and using your weekend to go out. It is an extremely social culture. And even if you're staying home, it is standard, common, normal every day to go out, put chairs on the sidewalk in front of your house and gather with the neighbors or have friends come over, maybe have a beer or a Coca-Cola or a Fanta and just sit out and hang out and have a good time. Maybe break out a barbecue and cook, maybe throw a family dinner, maybe just order in food. It's very easy to get food delivered. It's very easy to go out and find restaurants that are open. It's very easy to just run out or send someone to pick something up. There are services and taxis that will do that for you. But one way or another, Nicaraguans are very social and they do this all the time. It is certainly not limited to just one or two days a week like we're often used to in other places, not all places, but many places. Nicaragua is super social and that whole culture of just getting out of your house and going to events and and often it's just listening to live music having a beer hanging out with friends and having a good time in the evening it's often very cheap very approachable and very local people are not generally traveling a very long way for for a lot of events once in a while they will but it's the exception not the rule but as a digital nomad living in the country, it would be completely normal to branch out and maybe take buses, or if you have a car or a scooter, zip around to other villages or other cities and explore what they have to offer in the evenings as well. It's a great way to get out and explore more of the country and give yourself a reason for going to something. You can look on a website like nikarumba.com, find out what concerts are going on anywhere in the country, and then find something that looks interesting to you. You want to see a rock concert, you want to see a folklore uh, dance that is going on, some kind of presentation, a uh, food concert culinary event uh, going on somewhere, make that a destination, travel there, meet people, get to know more about the country, see the countryside, give yourself an excuse and a purpose for getting out and doing things. But being social is a really great reason for coming to any new country. Of course, if that's not your thing and you're just looking for a place that's going to work for you as a digital nomad, you can, of course, just stay home. But for a lot of people, coming to Nicaragua means an opportunity or an encouragement to change how they approach their evenings, their free time when they're not working. So if you're looking to be a digital nomad and you want to have a broader cultural experience, Nicaragua is going to provide that in a low cost, extremely accessible, very encouraging way where you'll have to work to avoid it rather than having to work to find it. As a busy digital nomad, you're very likely going to be spending a lot of your time working. And the more you're able to work and work efficiently, the better it's going to be for you. So at number seven, we're talking 
talking about the ability to hire out additional help. And it's extremely easy here in Nicaragua, easier than nearly anywhere you would go. Of course, there's many places that it's also easy and much of Southeast Asia, for example, this is also not a challenge, but this is a benefit to being in Nicaragua. There is currently a high unemployment rate, local labor rates are relatively low, and people are very open to uh, taking household uh, chore type jobs, whether it's part-time or full-time. As a digital nomad, this may be something that never occurred to you as an option, but coming to Nicaragua often makes it more than an option, but nearly an assumption as something that you really should consider because it could easily create a break-even or cheaper lifestyle, something that throws people off a lot. Of course, there's uh, obvious tasks that you may want to do that it's hard to figure out where exactly it would save you uh, save you money other than giving you more time to do your job, which is not necessarily something you're looking to do. But if you have someone come in and do your laundry, clean your house, things like that, maybe even cook for you, that can save you a lot of time, make you more efficient with your job. Or you may simply have the excess funds to be able to do that and the quality of uh, the increase of quality to your lifestyle is worth it for that reason. That's absolutely fine. But where people often don't think about where that help can be a really big deal is finding perhaps a driver or at least someone who can go to the market and do the shopping for you. Not only does this save you a lot of time, which of course is a big deal and again, helps you do your job, be more efficient, have more time, just put in less effort, getting more things that pay you done. That's very important as a digital nomad, finding those ways to be efficient with your time. But uh, by sending someone out to the market, not only does it potentially make you more efficient, which may not matter, not everyone has a job where that makes any financial difference. But by having someone who goes out and does your shopping for you, it can alleviate, eliminate from you the need to try to figure out how to get good prices and get the best products here in Nicaragua or to find the products at all. In many cases, you can, of course, go to the local grocery store. Here, that would be La Colonia or La Union. Those have a lot of selection, and it's very easy to go and shop there. But the prices tend to be quite a bit higher than what most Nicaraguans are going to spend on a normal shopping trip. You can go to a Pali or Maxi Pali, which are still normal grocery stores, but they have much longer lines, much lower selection. The prices are generally better, but not always. But you're going to spend a lot more time doing that. And you may not have access to all of these in a really convenient way. But a lot of products at the best prices are going to be found in the Mercado, and that can take a lot of time and a lot of knowledge. You could spend months just learning to navigate different areas, figuring out where you can buy cheese and where you can buy papaya and where you can buy whatever. You're going to put in a lot of effort, and you may never get great prices because you don't know what those prices should be, and even if you do, you may not be able to negotiate them. Of course, you might, but it's a risk and it's time consuming. But if you hire someone to do that, they know already where to go shopping. They can mix all those things together. They can spend time getting the best products at the best prices. And in many cases in doing so can offset much, and in some cases, even all of the cost of hiring someone to work for you, even full time, just through doing shopping on your behalf. And of course that shopping could go far beyond food items, it could also include shopping for uh, furniture. What if you need a cable or a new monitor to be able to do some work? You don't want to take your time off of work, run around trying to figure out where to buy those things. You can send someone out to do that for you and keep yourself maybe more efficient or maybe just keeping yourself working. The last thing you want to do is be a digital nomad and be putting in a lot of effort while not doing billable hours. That can be crippling by hiring out even just a single person who helps you out day to day or even part time could make a massive difference. And a lot of places that people look to digital nomad, this would be outrageously expensive for most digital nomad jobs, not all, but for most hiring out uh, staff in, in a country like Costa Rica or Panama could be prohibitively expensive or at least difficult to afford. But for anyone with a fully functioning digital nomad job for North America or Western European, uh, Western European companies, if you're here in Nicaragua, chances are hiring even full-time staff, let alone part-time staff, would be easily affordable and easily able to pay for itself in all the ways that allows you to make more money or to spend less. Somehow I managed to get to the end of the day, and as I went to make today's video, I realized that we had completely forgotten number six, which is access to healthcare. Here in Nicaragua, we have a lot of options for digital nomads who are coming here to work. Now, for most digital nomads, that implies you're working, and so you're not going to want to use, under normal circumstances, public health care. If you're a retiree, for example, public health care here in the country is a very important resource because health care in an emergency situation is free for all, including tourists or digital nomads. So that can be very important. But for most digital nomads, you're going to want to partake of a private health care uh, situation where you have potentially 
essentially insurance, but you can work completely with cash with no insurance, or you can get a payment plan with facilities like Vivian Pellis in Managua. They offer a national plan where you can pay a little bit per month, 30 or $60, depending on the plan that you want to have. This is for people who are going to be here longer term. It's not good for just the one month or two. You have to be in the system for at least six months before it really takes strong effect. So this is for people who are going to be staying much longer, but you can get insurance that takes effect right away. You have a lot of options. And if you're going to be traveling to lots of different countries, you're not going to want to uh, invest in one that is unique to Nicaragua. You're going to want one that just applies here. But if you're going to be here in Nicaragua for a really long time, then you may want to have one that is specific to the country. So, you know, your mileage is going to vary and it needs to be tailored for your needs. But you have lots of those options. However, even without any options like that, you can pay completely out of pocket in cash for healthcare here in the country. And you can pay at, at public uh, health facilities. Normally, they'll be free, so you don't really need to pay anything. Or private, and private comes in a very large uh, range from, from pretty uh, local uh, care that's, that's pr relatively basic to very advanced care in one of the big cities, like in Managua, where we have multiple very nice private hospitals or public ones that operate like private hospitals. Uh, if you need care that is not available here in the country, and we've mentioned this in a number of episodes recently, so please check those out. We have one on healthcare from just like the last week or so. Uh, that's a really good one uh, to go see. Our cost of healthcare here in the country is extremely low. So paying out of pocket, even for someone on a relatively low salary, is generally no problem at all. Even for really significant care, it may be a burden, but it would not be a crippling burden in most cases. It's the degree to which healthcare is accessible and affordable in Nicaragua is just fantastic. And if you're going to be in a situation where you go beyond the capabilities of Nicaragua, you have really uh, terrible cancer situation or uh, need just some kind of acute care that's that's far beyond what they can do here. Of course, you could return to your home country, but chances are that's not going to be what you want to do if you evaluate your options. What you're much more likely to want to do is go on to a country that is nearby that offers uh, a much larger range of healthcare options, normally because it's a larger country. Nicaragua being a very small country simply has limited resources because something that's a very specialty case, for example, a rare form of cancer, they would be lucky if they had lucky in a terrible way here if they had a single case in the country whereas a much larger country such as Colombia may have 10 or 20 or even 100 cases of the same thing that Nicaragua may have none. And so uh, they're able to put those resources for many of those things in those other countries simply because they're much larger countries and they are using centralized healthcare. We're a tiny country, so in a way you can think of the region, including Colombia and Mexico, as being just part of where we are and that the hospitals there are part of our hospital system. In some ways they are, in some ways they're not, but it's a good way to think of them because if you're living here or in any of the countries in the region, you share resources across many countries for things like medical care. And so the idea that you could have a really significant healthcare issue here in Nicaragua and need to go on to a Colombia or a Mexico or an El Salvador for additional care or possibly even a Cuba is completely reasonable. And people would do that just any given day. And all of those put together going to acute care here, getting uh, initial treatment, getting an initial diagnosis, getting sent on to a flight or whatever to one of those other countries and being taken care of in that country. All of that together is generally very affordable, very accessible, and often uh, greatly in, in excess of the healthcare you would expect from the majority of the countries from which people come to this region from, such as the United States, Canada, and UK specifically. Those three are famous worldwide for how bad their healthcare is and often how expensive it is, especially the United States on the expensive part. Here in Latin America, healthcare is generally pretty good, especially if you're able to get private healthcare. And uh, here in Nicaragua is definitely no exception. We have good healthcare here in the country. There are limits, but we have access to a world of healthcare. And so that is a reason that you may want to choose here as a digital nomad, low cost, high quality healthcare accessibility. Number five is infrastructure. Now, you may be thinking roads and highways, and that is absolutely true. Nicaragua does have some pretty good highways for connecting its major cities together. For digital nomads, what is really important in infrastructure is the ability to deliver reliable power and internet. And Nicaragua really delivers in these areas. As far as power goes, a lot of people will complain about coming to Nicaragua that there is frequent power outages. And this is absolutely true. There are frequent outages in much of the country. However, these outages are generally extremely short duration. 
from seconds to just a few minutes. Having an outage of a few hours is relatively rare and you can go months between having anything like that or in some cases even years depending on where you are in the country and what's going on in general. So During these times though it is accepted that normally you're going to have a UPS, a battery system at home and we can often go a year at a time without having an outage long enough that our battery system is not enough to cover keeping everything up and running. I'm able to keep working from home through 90 to 95 percent of all the outages that we have and when we have an outage that is greater than that I have a lot of warning because I know that my battery is going to run out and I'm able to do something to deal with that. A lot of people have generators, but if you're a digital nomad, that can be very difficult. And so generally you would just move to a cafe or something temporarily because outages are extremely rarely going to go over four hours. I've only seen that maybe two times in all the years that I've lived in Nicaragua and never have I seen one come anywhere close to an entire day, as opposed to somewhere like the United States where small outages are really rare, but long ones that go into multiple days are relatively common by comparison. So in the United States, needing to deal with ways to handle long power outages is more important. Whereas here in Nicaragua, just having standard battery backups that protect your computers, maybe a little bit larger than general, will do wonders for keeping you online. And if all you're working from is a laptop, the only thing you need to keep online other than your laptop, which presumably already has a battery in it, so doesn't need an additional battery unless you want to extend its runtime, is keeping your, your router online or your Wi-Fi. That requires a lot less power, a smaller battery, uh, and is very easy to do. So for a lot of people, that's plenty. If you want to have a little bit more extended options, having a nice battery backup that can charge your laptop, so you get two or three battery charges out of your laptop, and can charge a cell phone or two, a few little devices like that, can do wonders. And as long as that is powering your router, you could potentially stay up and running for one or two days and keep working even if the power was out that long, which we've never witnessed a single time in this country. But in theory, if there was an outage of unprecedented scale, you'd still be able to function with a little bit of effort and still not going to a generator or such. So your mileage will vary there, but in general, the power infrastructure is quite good. You just need to plan accordingly as you would wherever you go, you always have to adapt to how the power outages happen where you are. But more importantly, because it's easy to mitigate power outages with solar or batteries or generators or whatever, or by moving to a cafe, what's more important is the internet infrastructure. And Nicaragua's internet infrastructure is incredibly good. Now, of course, if you're renting an apartment, you may have a problem that the apartment you are renting may come with internet, and they will often cheap out. Same as you get in the United States, they will get the cheapest thing they possibly can, and they don't care if it doesn't work well, and it's too late once you've rented. So be wary of those situations. That is common. If you're going to rent somewhere that provides internet, make sure that you have checked and made sure that that internet is good for what you do. If you're not familiar with what you need for internet, I do have videos on that. I'll do my best to link it so that you can pop over to it if you're on the right type of computer that shows those links. If not, I'll try to put it in the links below and uh, talk about the speeds you might need, the type of internet you might need, and the carriers here in country. But if you're going to be providing your own internet, you can make sure you're getting what you need when you go to the carrier. So it depends if you're having to pay for it separately or if it's part of your rental. Just be aware that it is a common problem for the uh, apartments to come with bad internet, but the country provides amazing internet resources and you can get speeds far in excess of what you need for any digital uh, nomadry work. I am a full-time YouTuber and work in very high quality, extremely large files because I do large format videos and I do all of my backup and storage online and I'm able to work from relatively uh, middling uh, ISP accounts here in country with no problem whatsoever and in fact in many cases find it much better than working in the United States and I am uh, constantly working with U.S. companies that shift work into Nicaragua once they find out that they can put staff here and have more reliable internet at lower cost than in the United States. I have offices in the US that are constantly having internet outages and struggling with low quality and low speed internet when they are up and their staff in Nicaragua takes over from their US staff because they're always online and don't have internet problems whatsoever. So it's actually a really great location for that. It's also worth noting for those who are a little bit technical. 
Nicaragua lies with a direct fiber connection to Miami. So if you uh, connect with good internet here in Nicaragua, it appears much like you're connected in Miami. And the latency on the line is so low that it looks like just a little bit farther part of the United States. If you're operating remotely to Miami, you have the same latency as you would if you were working from home in, say, a Dallas or a Chicago. And so from someone in the United States, it simply looks like you're connecting through somewhere in Florida. You don't have delays on the line if you're doing video conferencing or you're doing uh, active online collaboration or you're making phone calls. You act and behave and look just like someone who's working from inside the United States or Canada, um, more like the United States. Uh, and that for almost everywhere is an extremely big benefit. There aren't that many countries that connect directly and have such good connections through uh, the United States directly through a single hop. And so Nicaragua actually from a internet standpoint, not only inside the country, has one of the best internet infrastructures that you can encounter anywhere in the world. It's certainly not at the absolute top of the game, but it is very good. It is by far the leader in the region and as an average makes the US look really sad that the US you have huge areas that do not have good access to internet. Um, and here in Nicaragua, there's essentially nowhere that you can reasonably try to work except I suppose the islands that is probably a problem uh, for or a challenge, I should say. Uh, but if you're anywhere in in populated Nicaragua, even way out in little villages out in the country in a farmhouse in the middle of an old city in a colonial town in a modern city, it doesn't matter. All of them are going to have access to really high speed, really high quality, extremely reliable in Internet. And what we have found is if we do have a problem with our internet, which is few and far between, we tend to get service within hours with, I mean, meaning if we have actual problems where like the line to our house is damaged, we will often get service within two to four hours that technicians will come to our house. Of course, they say we'll get there as soon as we can. And in the United States, you would expect that to be many days, possibly weeks. And here they mean, well, they've got to get in the truck, they got to, you know, finish the sandwich they're eating and find where your house is. It's a completely different experience. And so we've been extremely happy with having internet here in Nicaragua. And I think that there is essentially no digital nomad experience where the internet here is not going to be more than adequate. There's really nothing you can do online where you'd be able to work in the United States without having specialty connections and specialty offices built just to handle technical needs where you wouldn't be able to do it just as well in Nicaragua. So the infrastructure here is a major draw, especially versus other countries in the general area, even going to Costa Rica, which is very close and very similar in many ways, you immediately notice a drop in the quality of the internet connections that you normally are able to get the speed gets lower, the latency gets higher, just not things that you want, you can definitely be a digital nomad in Costa Rica, they very much encourage it, they have a lot of infrastructure for it, it's a great option. But in the in the area of Internet, Nicaragua definitely outclasses everyone in the region. And similarly, in Nicaragua, we have very good cell coverage. This may not be the leader in the way that fiber Internet to the doorstep is, but we have multiple carriers with good speeds, with very good coverage throughout the country. So if you're able to work from a high speed cellular connection for whatever it is you're doing, or you simply want options to stay connected, make sure you're not missing emails or chats or whatever, this generally works extremely well. We have coverage through almost everywhere. There are some areas when you get into very rural areas where you're going to have some drops in coverage where the, the terrain is a bit more uh, hilly and you have no houses and there's just gaps between cell towers, but it's very unlikely you're going to be spending time there. So if you're traveling between places, you may have drops, uh, but mostly we find that that is in very rural areas and it's definitely the exception. There's We know of specific places where that happens, but in most cases we can drive from here in the northwest of Nicaragua all the way to the southern border in Costa Rica without ever losing cell service. So it depends where you're going, uh, but the coverage is very inexpensive and quite good. We have Tigo and Claro as carriers and uh, there are no restrictions on internet here in the country so you don't have to worry about like in some countries that you may have uh, no access to voice calls or no open internet and you have to go through a firewall or something like that. There's nothing like that in Nicaragua. This is a completely free communications country which is important for digital nomads because you won't run into gotchas where uh, you're not able to use a VPN or you're not able to use some technology or some equipment uh, that you may have. So this is perfect in that way as well. 
If you have worked as a digital nomad previously, you're probably used to problems generated by a difference in time zones. Most really good digital nomad locations are pretty far from the time zone in which you're likely to want to work or need to work. Now that's not universally true, and here in Latin America, the, most of the region lies mostly north-south, and so time zones don't tend to vary a lot between different options. However, there are some such as Brazil, which is going to sit very far to the east. And assuming that you are working or need to work on a US or Canadian time zone, that is probably going to be a little bit problematic. It's very doable because it's only one to two hours farther east, but it is pretty extreme. Here in Nicaragua, we're on central time. Now, it's important to note, we do not like all sensible countries recognize daylight savings time, which is absolutely insane and no one should ever use it. But the US and Canada do broadly and you do have to accommodate for that. Basically, no matter where you are in the world, any place that's good for being a digital nomad is not gonna have daylight savings time because only crazy places have daylight savings time. But other than that one thing that you need to adjust for, which is very simple, we are central time. So under the time of the year when the United States is not on daylight savings time, we are the same time zone as cities like Dallas, Houston, Austin, of course, and Chicago. So that part of the country. And it's only one hour off from the East Coast jobs in places like New York, Philadelphia, Washington, DC, Miami. And we're only two hours off from places like California and Seattle. So all of the country lies within two hours and most of it within one hour. And a good chunk of it is the same. When we're not aligned with Chicago, in case you're not familiar with how daylight savings time works, the U.S. shifts by one hour, and so we end up being in line with places like Denver and Salt Lake City. And so one hour off from Chicago, one hour off from Los Angeles, and two hours off from New York City. But never are you more than two hours off from anywhere in the continental United States, and very rarely are you off by that much. So having a time zone that allows you to work essentially the same time as people in the US and Canada can be very important. You're not working in the middle of the night or super late in the evening. Now, some people may want that and it is a reason why some people choose to work from Europe or from Southeast Asia because they want to shift, you know, eight hours in one direction or eight hours in another because they want to have two jobs or they just want to have daytime in their in their country and they want to work evenings or, or middle of the night in order to accommodate that. And that's fine. And if you are working for a job in Europe, then yeah, that would work here. But otherwise, you would need to look very far east or west to make that happen. But for the majority of people who want to be digital nomads, they want to work in the same rough time schedule as what their office is. Now, some people just have flexible schedules and it doesn't matter too much. But if it comes to family and friends or just anything that you're dealing with as far as needing to interact with uh, North America, then the time zone is going to make a big difference. The time zone is the same, mostly because we sit very close to the United States. By plane, it's only two and a quarter hours back to the US. And so that is important, as we mentioned, that the internet connection is physically so close to Miami and connected directly that you don't notice that you're working remotely in that way. So just with the, the time zones and the internet, it makes it seem like you're working somewhere in the United States Midwest that simply doesn't honor daylight savings time, which of course you can personally shift your life to daylight savings time and pretend it's going on, but just be aware that it'll not shift in Nicaragua and everything will be off one hour for you. Number three should come as no surprise to anyone who knows anything about Nicaragua, but safety is a really good reason that you may want to be a digital nomad in Nicaragua. Nicaragua is traditionally the safest country in the region. Now we did have El Salvador just blow everyone away in 2023 with becoming the safest country in the Western Hemisphere for one year. But while El Salvador has an had an incredibly good year, Nicaragua remains in a very normal position of being extremely safe. What little violence does happen in the country is very, first of all, very minor and puts it generally on par with countries like Canada or the United States for safety. It depends on the year. Most years, the United States is more dangerous than Nicaragua and Nicaragua is a little bit more dangerous than Canada, but sitting in between those is a pretty good spot for the Western Hemisphere. Of course, Europe remains safer still and El Salvador somehow this year, but uh, in really good years, the United States will approach Nicaragua in safety, and in bad years, Nicaragua will approach the United States in danger. But that is the range that we're in. It's a very, very safe country. And what little violence does exist generally happens outside of tourist populations. It is as a digital nomad, as a expat, as a foreigner who is visiting the country, what violence does exist is extremely rarely going to apply to you. Almost all of the limited violence that there is exists either in the inner city in Managua or on remote, very poor regions of the autonomous Caribbean coast. 
There is some in tourist destinations like San Juan del Sur, which is very easy to avoid. That is the only tourist area known for any amount of violence. And even there, it's extremely low. But in the rest of the country, if you're in a Granada, a Leon, a Matagalpa, a Popoyo, a Las Pinitas, you're looking at a safety degree that is that is really extreme. You have very few concerns to the point where the government needs to issue warnings that walking alone in the middle of the night in the middle of a city in poor areas while drunk is is probably not advised. They don't actually have any situations where bad things happened that they that they are announcing, but it is a foolish thing to do and you should probably avoid doing it no matter how safe it actually is or how safe it feels like it is take some reasonable precautions, but that's the kind of problem we're starting to run into, that it is so safe that people are starting to do really foolish things. For safety reasons, you should put Nicaragua very, very much at the top of your list, along with El Salvador in this particular category, and we're very proud of the work that they have done up there. They're very close to us. We actually have ferries that go directly between the two countries. Very small ferries, nothing interesting. I do want to do a show on that at some point. I do know someone who did it recently, and I'm looking forward to getting some feedback as to how that is, but it is a tiny ferry running between the countries and not something that normal people would do and it launches from a really odd place but it is exciting and that's how close we are right we share the coastal region here on the pacific in central america and uh, we share a lot of things because we're neighboring countries uh, and and safety is one that we're very proud to be sharing now so this particular stretch of the pacific coast in central america is absolutely excellent for people who want the comfort of knowing they're going to a place that is almost certainly quite a bit safer than wherever they're coming from. Now, if you're coming from Canada, yes, much of Canada is just so safe that we can't actually say we're competing with that at this time. But there was in the last couple of years that Nicaragua did actually pass Canada in safety and El Salvador did actually pass it this year. So uh, we, we are in very much the Canadian category, but on an average over a long period of time, Canada remains a little bit safer but you have that kind of comfort coming to this region. And we are the only places in all of Latin America that are currently able to make those kinds of claims for safety. So if you're looking at this region and safety matters to you and safety should matter to nearly everyone, it may not override interest in other areas. There are lots of reasons why you'd wanna consider other countries, but if safety is at the top of your list, especially if you're a digital nomad bringing children to a country, then Nicaragua and El Salvador absolutely should be bumped up your list significantly. At number two, and this is a really important one, which honestly is why we're at number two, is the accessibility of your work visa for digital nomads. Now, if you look at a lot of sites online, including some really popular YouTubers, they're gonna talk about how places like Costa Rica have done such a good job, and they offer uh, visas for digital nomads that make them very attractive. And I recently saw a list by Hey Nadine that brought this to my attention. I looked at her list and every single one of them was worse than Nicaragua, even though they were good on her list, but she she missed the best one in this category, there's a very important reason why. And there's a marketing trick that countries are employing or a gap that YouTubers are not realizing when they're looking at how this works. And that is in Costa Rica, for example, they just issued a new post-COVID digital nomad specialty visa that allows you to go to Costa Rica relatively easy as a digital nomad and work there for some period of time. And it is, it is very flexible and it's a long period of time and it's a really great visa. It is, however, quite a bit worse than Nicaragua's non-visa system that has been in place for a very long time. Nicaragua's system for this is far and away either at or tied at number one in the world, period. There is nowhere that is better for digital nomad visa requirements than Nicaragua. And this is a major reason why people coming from North America or Western Europe need to think about Nicaragua from an accessibility standpoint, because this is as good as it will ever get for you. And how does the system work? Nicaragua does not recognize foreign work as something that needs to be seen as work in the country. It is seen as foreign income, the same as an investment or retirement account would be remotely. And so you do not require a working visa in order to come to Nicaragua as a digital nomad. You can come on a tourist visa. Now, similarly, people believe that the tourist visa only gives you 90 days in the country and that you then have to leave and that is the end of it. So you have this very limited 90 day time span, which may be fine for a lot of digital nomads. You're used to doing that. You move to a place for 90 days and you move on to another one. I've done this myself for a long period of time in different countries. That can be fine. 
But in many of the countries that people are raving about their good visas for digital nomads, they're talking about 180 days with extensions to one or more years. And that can be very important for someone who wants to put in some effort to settle down, invest in an office setup, maybe, you know, just get to know a country while working. You don't have a lot of time to be a tourist and you want to invest more time in it. You just want to not be quite so mobile, a little bit less nomad, a little bit more digital. But here in Nicaragua, those numbers sound when you look at them on websites, like you're going to get 90 days and that is it. That is not at all the case. The system here is 90 days initial at the border with three regional extensions, meaning you just go to your regional capital. Of course, if you're staying in Managua, it's the national capital. And there you can ask for a 30 day extension on your tourist visa. And you can do that three times. That means you're getting a total of 180 days on that tourist visa that allows you to work as a digital nomad. So everybody, more or less, essentially all people coming in are getting 180 days on your first visit to Nicaragua. But what they then leave out is that we have a border run system, generally with Costa Rica, not necessarily. I have other videos that cover exactly what a border run is, how to do it, what it costs, all those kinds of details. But all you have to do is do a border run to Costa Rica. This is a one day effort. You'd have to do it once every six months that you want to extend and you get another 180 days. It starts the system over again. You don't have to take all of your stuff with you. You can just go out and come right back in. You can take it all with you if you want, but you can make it very easy by maintaining an apartment here, keeping everything there, just taking the bus over the border, whatever works for you. We'll cover that in other videos. But this system means you're not looking at getting 90 days, you're not looking at getting 180 days, but realistically, you're looking at getting much closer to two years or more before you even have to start considering what else you might need to do. For example, getting a residency permit. Now, if you want to work here for five years or 10 years, yes, you're going to need to move into a different type of paperwork, but fundamentally the system doesn't change. It's just you're switching from what we call the border run tourist system into the temporary or long-term residency system. The fundamentals stay the same. Your income is still foreign, you're not looking at local work or work taxes. You're not part of that system. They want to do this because it encourages people to come in. And of course, if your income is coming from, for example, the United States or Canada, and you're working in Nicaragua, they know that while they're not taxing you on your income, that you're going to take that money, at least a large chunk of it, and you're going to spend it here in Nicaragua. You're going to spend it on your rent. You're going to spend it on your food. You're very likely to spend it on some household help, maybe even a full-time one or more people who will work for you do your shopping, like we mentioned, shopping, cooking, cleaning, all that kind of stuff, the domestic help or other tasks are very likely to be something that you're going to hire. You're probably going to start buying beer here because where else are you going to get it? You're probably going to go out and go to live events. You're going to go stay at a hotel from time to time. You're going to go do some attractions. You're going to do things that generate revenue for the country, and you're going to be a happy semi-resident doing so. And to you, it is a tax-free system that makes it really, really lucrative to be in Nicaragua. And for Nicaragua, it is absolutely absolutely a funnel of free money just pouring into the country, because what are you going to do? Not spend the money you're making? You're just going to sit in your house and do nothing when you're in paradise and it's so easy to go out and, you know, get a bigger house, get rent a car, pay for taxis, go to restaurants because you have the funds to do so. Of course you are. There's someone will be the exception, but that exception is so rare. It doesn't matter. This is a really smart system for Nicaragua. It's absolutely brilliant and it makes it the absolute most attractive place from a logistics standpoint for nearly anyone in the world world that's able to digital nomad, there are just essentially no places that are so quick and easy and, and free for you to just come in and be a working digital nomad. So when people say that places like, you know, Colombia and Costa Rica and Portugal have really good systems, they do, but none of them are in the category of Nicaragua. It is not even close. So when you're thinking, what am I going to do to be able to come be a digital nomad in Nicaragua? Literally, the answer is grab your laptop, throw it in a backpack and get on that plane. That's what you need to do. Assuming you have a passport, don't forget your passport. That's all you have to do. Show up and start being a digital nomad. You don't have this overhead of having to apply for a digital nomad visa. You don't have this overhead of needing to get residency. You don't have this overhead of anything. You don't even have to have a hotel past the first day. You are supposed to have a hotel booked for that very first day. If you don't, you need to book one when you get to the border on your phone. That's a little bit of a pain. Most countries are like that, so it's not really a surprise. You do not need an, uh, a return ticket or an onward ticket like you do in Costa Rica. So even just showing up at the border, Nicaragua is much easier than Costa Rica, uh, which is generally considered quite easy. So in comparison to the places that people are raving about, Nicaragua makes them look like they're not even trying. So that is our number two reason and is, is in that list of 
just nothing else is going to make this as good for you. Now, of course, if you're willing to go through the effort of a visa to whatever country you want to go to, then this isn't a big deal. But for a lot of people, the ability to get that visa, knowing that they're going to get that visa, the delay in getting that visa, all those things can make it that they're not going out and being a digital nomad as soon as they want, or that they're not, not getting the schedules and flexibility and planning that they want to have. And Nicaragua allows you to plan and schedule and do all those things. It also, and this is important, if you want to be a digital nomad around the world and you want to do a lot of different things, if you want to be a digital nomad around the world and you want to travel around and go to a lot of different places and you want to maintain uh, a way to keep doing that no matter what is happening with visas and other other paperwork that may happen you can use nicaragua as a place to be a digital nomad in between other places because if for example you want to go to panama for six months and be a digital nomad that's excellent you want to then go to Portugal for a little while. And what if you end up having paperwork that doesn't line up and you're going to have a gap of days or weeks or even months? What are you going to do? You may not be able to stay in the country that you've been in because your paperwork has run out. You may not have a place to go on to in the future because they haven't allowed you in yet. They haven't issued you a visa. You can come to Nicaragua and fill in the gaps by being in Nicaragua for whatever amount of time you need to be between places. This makes Nicaragua an ideal place to treat as a form of home base, even if it's not the place you're going to be the, the most of the time. You could be spent 90% of your time in other countries, but come back to Nicaragua anytime that you need to come back and restock or, or do new planning or wait for paperwork to come through because you have the flexibility to be here essentially as long as you want to be. And as long as you are going out and doing a process like that, you can keep coming back to Nicaragua and do 180 days, no question. You could generally come in and do a year or two without any problem as long as you then went and did a year or two outside of Nicaragua and came back. You would never even have to do the residency paperwork, probably ever. So that's really worth considering that by, by mixing things together, you can use Nicaragua in really interesting ways to make yourself that very nomad, digital nomad, while still having a home base and still having flexibility that you don't have to worry about maybe returning to your home country where there's probably higher costs and other things. And that leads us to number one. At number one, far and away, the number one reason to come to Nicaragua and use this as your destination as a digital nomad is cost of living. Nicaragua has the lowest cost of living in North America and in most of the Western Hemisphere. Where it isn't the absolute cheapest, it is really, really close. And you're not going to really notice a big difference. You're not going to find anywhere else that's so much cheaper that it's going to make a significant uh, difference in your planning or lifestyle. Nicaragua is outrageously cheap in nearly all areas. Housing is probably the biggest one. Your rents are outrageously low. You could, in theory, rent here for even under $100 a month. We are not as cheap as some parts of Southeast Asia, and we're not definitely not as cheap as some parts of, say, Central Africa. But those regions often have very poor infrastructures, are very far in time zones from where you want to work, often have very expensive flights to get there. Coming to Nicaragua, from a travel perspective, the flights to get down here, I just booked flights just the other day coming from New York to Managua for just $106. Now, if you're going to bring a whole bunch of luggage as part of a digital nomad, you'll pay a little bit more than that, but not bad at all for coming all the way from New York. If you're coming from other parts of the country, it may be even cheaper or a little bit more depending on where you are. You have really inexpensive options for coming into the country that you will not get in far-flung locations on other continents. You have a month-to-month -month massive savings by having very, very low cost of rent or if you decide to uh, stay in a condo or stay in a, just a room or even stay in a hotel, all those things are very cheap compared to anywhere else in the region. Even places like Honduras and Guatemala, which are very inexpensive, are noticeably more expensive in most of these areas than Nicaragua. Your food is likely to be some of the cheapest around. You will probably find slightly cheaper food in like Guatemala, but only barely and only in smaller cities. If you get into the places that you're more likely to go as an expat, like Antigua or Guatemala City or Quetzaltenango, Shela, you're probably going to spend a little bit more rather than a little bit less. Uh, in general, those costs are going to go up. If you decide that you do want to hire in help around the house, someone to do domestic chores, do your shopping or whatever, you're going to find that Nicaragua is the lowest cost for hiring someone out if anywhere in the region. You would probably find a little bit cheaper in a place like Haiti, but Haiti has a lot of other problems, infrastructure and safety safety that make it not as desirable or maybe not desirable at all at this time. Haiti is a wonderful country with lots of wonderful people, but this is probably a bad time to look at it for digital nomadry. But of places on the continent or 
like the Dominican Republic and around the Caribbean, you're going to find by far your lowest cost of labor in Central America and Nicaragua is generally going to be the lowest within that region, especially now because unemployment is relatively high and the minimum wage has stayed pretty low. So you're able to hire in a fully legal way very affordably and get one or more people that are going to work for you. So all these different areas that you're dealing with are generally going to be very cheap. Your internet is not going to be dramatically cheap, but it'll probably be cheaper than you're spending in the United States, partially because you're able to get what you need for less, even if some outrageous services with big numbers on them that you will never touch and make no difference for you would cost more. The practical internet here is very affordable. If you want to have cell phone service, for example, it is outrageously cheap. I pay about $12 a month for really good service, much better than I have in the United States, but I don't have roaming with that to other countries. It's just for Nicaragua, but I'm able to add it to my American service. So I use T-Mobile when I'm in the US and I use Tigo when I'm here. We can choose Claro, for example, and the price is about the same. At $12 per month for, for prepay, that is really, really good. And the speed is fast. The connections are great. It's very easy to use. And uh, those kinds of things are great. Shopping in the market, all of that very, very cheap. The place where you're going to spend a little bit more money if you're going to be buying appliances or anything large, if you need to get uh, digital equipment, cameras and laptops and things like that, you're going to pay a premium here in Nicaragua. It's generally not the worst, but it is far from the best, but you do have some options. You can buy in the United States or Canada and have it shipped in and with one of the shipping services. Of course, you're still going to pay a premium for that, but not as much. You could uh, purchase in Panama or Costa Rica, Guatemala, someplace like that, and just drive in with it. That's not a problem. The cost of flights to places like the United States are so low that you can consider, and people do this, flying into the United States, doing their shopping and flying back with it from there. Or you could just spend a little bit more because you're saving so much money on everything else here in Nicaragua that it's worth spending a little bit more on, say, appliances and such. But when people have done really careful pricing of appliances here and shop around and not just buy the first thing that becomes available to the gringos, we generally find that the markups on appliances and stuff is relatively minor. You're looking at maybe 10 or 15% for most things once you've shopped around rather than paying double or anything like that. Laptops, you may actually be looking at paying double. So you need to be careful what you're buying where, but generally as a digital nomad, you're not looking to buy new electronics in a place that you're traveling to unless it's a place that specific, specifically specializes in those types of things. When it comes to everything else in life, which is often things like going out, going to the movies, going to a concert, going to dinner at a restaurant, going out and enjoying a hotel or adventure for the weekend, maybe going climbing in a mountain or visiting another city. All of those things tend to be extremely inexpensive compared to just about anywhere, even locations like Costa Rica or Guatemala that are generally considered less expensive than primary countries. They are that people will be digital and nomading from. Nicaragua is dramatically cheaper. This is uh, really important because it means that going out and getting a beer, going out and getting dinner at a restaurant, going out and seeing an event or doing social things is very affordable. And that is one of the reasons why so many Nicaraguans go out and do that stuff all the time. Even though incomes here in the country are generally very low, they are able to go out and do those things because the cost of everything is quite low. And that accessibility to just life in general for a digital nomad is really important. It means you don't have to sacrifice because you're working abroad. Often we're facing lower incomes or uh, insecurity in our income streams, and we need to tighten our belts or be a little bit more careful or simply do less expensive activities. Not always, of course, but for many of us, that is really important. And here in Nicaragua, nearly every aspect of life is about as cheap as you're going to find on the continent. And when you include the cost of traveling to and from different locations. In general, you're going to find this to be one of the lowest cost total cost of ownership, the total cost of digital nomadry that you're going to find anywhere in the Western Hemisphere and nearly anywhere in the world, assuming that you're starting in the Western Hemisphere or possibly from Europe. Even coming from Europe, getting here can be relatively cheap. Just a quick bit of advice. Normally, if you're coming from Europe, you're going to want to fly into either Costa Rica or Honduras or possibly El Salvador and then find another way into Nicaragua because there aren't direct connections from Nicaragua to Europe, but there are to North America, for example. We have the same thing if you're coming from South America or you need to go on to South America. Generally, you're going to go to either Costa Rica or Panama first before getting those southern connections just because that is where southern connections tend to exist. But we're such a small country, it's easy to get between here and the, the regional uh, partners very easily. You can just take a bus or in some cases, even taxis. So it's really not difficult. It's not like uh, going between very large countries with, with lots of space in between them. We're much more like American states, for example, more like New England in reality for how the size of the neighboring uh, countries and how easy it is to get between them in most cases. So cost of living, far and away, this is the one that often 
makes the difference between someone thinking, well, I'd like to be a digital nomad. I'd like to try getting out and exploring the world. I'd like to give this a try, but my income is going to drop. I don't know if I can afford to do it. Because of the way that, that Nicaragua works, because of the incredible low cost of, of living, because of the uh, absolutely transparent barrier to entry for, for your work visa, for your, for your digital nomad visa, you can't work in the country, but you can work from the country, no problem at all, because the infrastructure is so good. Suddenly, Nicaragua can make the entire process so affordable that it's actually more lucrative to work from here at a lower salary and be a digital nomad than it is to have a higher salary and be in whatever country you are coming from often by quite a significant degree. So while being a digital nomad in much of the world may prove to be a little bit challenging for a lot of people, those same people when they come to Nicaragua may discover that it's actually really easy, very affordable, and they can have a lifestyle in many cases that is much more affluent than they had in their old country with their old jobs. And so that's a big reason to come down here and at least give a start in Nicaragua. Discover if digital nomadry is for you. Learn how good it can be in one of the easiest, lowest cost possible locations anywhere. Eliminate all the really hard stuff. Do it as easy as possible. Then when you move on to harder locations, more expensive locations like Costa Rica or Colombia or Argentina or South Africa, right? You're going to do so with a lot more knowledge and experience under your belt. Or if you're in those locations and you're barely getting by, it's a struggle or you need a break from trying to make it work and all the hustle, consider coming to Nicaragua and give some time here. Maybe you can catch up on your bills or maybe you can just get a breather and treat it like a vacation because it's so much easier being a digital nomad from here than in nearly anywhere else in the world. Thanks for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel and the work that we do here, we work all throughout Latin America, but I am based here in Nicaragua because when I chose where to be a permanent digital nomad, this is the country that made sense after a decade of doing research and living around the world. I love Nicaragua. It has worked out really well for me and I know lots of people who have moved here successfully and those who also just pass through and love to spend some of their time here as digital nomads and then move on uh, with their exploration of the world. But you can support the work that we do by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. I'll put it on the screen. That comes directly to me and helps make all of the that we do here possible. I really appreciate everyone who puts in the effort to uh, sponsor the show. And of course, share on social media. Tell a friend or family member or both about the show. Let them know that there are resources for relocation, for digital nomadry, for Nicaragua, Latin America in general, where you can learn a lot more about what it's like to live here, how you can live here, and you can get down in our community. And I encourage you to scroll down into the little question and answer area down below. Start a conversation. Ask questions that you have. I'm, everyone always has new questions that we've not thought of before. We'd love to hear your feedback. What do you think of the show? What would you like to see? What can we answer for you? Because we bring this out every day. And uh, it's great to know what you guys are actively looking to have answered. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you tomorrow.